So time lapses are a really beautiful way of capturing time passing. And although they look like something that would be really hard to accomplish, it's actually relatively easy. It's actually so easy that even iPhones can do it. It's as easy as hitting a button to record a time lapse. But on your DSLR, you're actually gonna take a few extra steps, but ultimately will achieve the exact same thing. So I'm gonna show you exactly what you're gonna need, how to set it up, and of course, what you can do in post-production to touch it up a little bit if you're feeling a little creative. So let's get started. All right, and quick disclaimer actually, there are many ways to shoot a time lapse. Traditionally, you actually stitch a bunch of stills together, but nowadays it really is simple as recording a video, and I'll show you exactly how to do that on a DSLR, but no matter the method you choose, all these principles still apply. All right, so to actually film a time lapse video, you only need three things. One, a location, two, a tripod, and three, a camera. First things first, you're gonna have to choose the view that you want. This could be a landscape typically, but it also could be a skyline or some sort of street where a lot of motion is happening because that's gonna give you the most dynamic video. Now you just have to set up your tripod. Ideally, you would want to use a tripod, but if you don't have one, you can try using whatever's around you, whether it be a bench, a, a seat, or even the railing if it's flat enough to hold your camera. No matter what though, you just wanna make sure that there's no movement on your camera whatsoever. So this can be a problem even if you're using a tripod, if the ground shakes, if you walk by it, or if the cars drive by it, etc. So just something to keep in mind. All right, and that's pretty much it. Now you're gonna just set your camera down, and now we're gonna hop into the camera and show you the exact settings you need to do to run a time lapse. All you're gonna do is go into video mode and set up the parameters how you'd like so that you have the proper exposure. So in this case, I have my shutter speed a little slow. I have my aperture pretty tight because I want to have most of the frame in focus. And then I had to bump up my ISO because we're in a shaded area. So although the aperture is really closed tight and it's a sunny day, we need a little more sensitivity on the sensor to get the proper exposure. We're gonna go to the menu. And on the red page, I think it's on the third. Actually, no, it's on the fifth page on this case. There's a menu item called time-lapse movie. It's always gonna be disabled uh, upon initializing. So you need to just select it, click enable. Before you do that, you're gonna change a few more settings here. Just click info. And you could set the interval between the shots. So the interval is how long it's gonna take between each frame to take a picture. In this case, I have it set to five seconds, but you can set this as low as one second, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And then the second option you can choose and adjust is the number of shots. And this one's pretty much exactly what it says, is how many pictures this is gonna take. So it even tells you the math at the end. At one second intervals for 300 photos, you're gonna have a five minute video, or actually, it's gonna take five minutes to record and you'll have a 10 second video. And if we bump this up to five seconds for the same number of shots, you'll see we'll be here 25 minutes for a 10 second video. So this is all preference. Obviously, the larger the gap, the more drastic the movement you're gonna have and the time lapse will be. So if you're doing like an all day shoot, you may even want to do like every minute or so, and then you'll have a, like a 10 minute or five minute time lapse video that shows the whole day passing through. So this is gonna be a little trial and error. I find one to five seconds is really good and you're not here forever, but it just depends. So in this case, we'll go for five seconds and we'll keep it at 300 for a 10 second video, just so we have a more drastic look to the time lapse. Once you're ready, just click okay. You're all set. You get out of the menu and you'll clearly see here that says whenever you're ready, you can put, use a test shot by hitting the shutter speed, or if you're ready, just hit the record button like you normally would. In this case, we're just gonna hit the record button and just get started. And really quick here, you can stop this at any time using the shutters button, or if you want to go back to the menu, you can hit the record button. But in any case, we're just gonna leave the camera here and let it do its thing for however long you have it. The timer's on the top left, so you're ready to go. And now the screen's off and it'll start recording. Really quick on this DSLR, um, all the settings will be shown to you on top. So it's taking all these pictures for However long, it's already at 285 photos taken. So you're just gonna have to wait this out. This is when uh, the patience comes in, but it, you can bring a book or chill or 
I don't know, do whatever you want during the time lapse, just enjoy yourself. Twenty minutes later. All right, and as you can see now, it's finally done. We waited our 25 minutes, and you know it's done because it will actually return to its original menu screen where you can see all the options. And if you hit the play button, you can actually see your time lapse. All right, and now let's hop onto the computer to do a little bit of post-production if you feel like it. All right, so once you open your video editor of choice, you can import your footage. I have it right here, the time lapse, as you can see. And you have a few options to really touch it up. Um, the main one being probably just doing some basic color correction. So if you want to make it pop a certain way or give it a stylistic look, you can do that here. Hopefully your white balance is correct. In my instance, it is. I would say that what I messed up on is the highlights are a little overexposed. So I may want to adjust that. As you can see, I'll pull up the scopes here so you can see the data of the image. And we're losing a little bit of data. There's not too much we can do about that. You try lowering the highlights. It may uh, not always pop up in the data. Oh, there you go. You can lower the highlights a bit. That's kind of helping. Increasing the shadows brightens up the image. Whites, I might reduce just because it is overexposed and give it a little darker look by adding some blacks back in there. Generally, you don't want it to go below 10 or five because you start losing data. Well, actually, you start losing data at zero, but there's some rules you can follow. It's all in see personal preference. You want a less contrasty look, you go here. One more contrasty look, you go down here. But obviously, going to the extremes is never really a good idea, so do what you want. Let's say I'm happy with that. You can also decide to add some LUTs. Um, I have some that I've been meaning to use, so I'm gonna try one. Let's go to Drive. And this one actually looks really cool. Um, I might reduce the effect because it's a little too dramatic for me. There you go, this gives it a nice little uh, contrasty look, a little more cinematic, you could say. And let's watch that play through. Great, it looks fantastic. Another thing you can do here to make a, make this a little more dynamic is add some motion. So we can go to effects control here. And it's different on every um, editing tool, but basically we're gonna try to do like a zoom in or rather a zoom out and we'll have it start from this corner and we'll zoom out to the full image here. So all we have to do for that is go to the beginning of our clip we're gonna add keyframes to our position and our scale. And in this case, we're gonna scale in. So we're gonna start in zoomed in, let's say 140. And I wanted to start around this side of the corner. So I'm just gonna use these dials to move the image up and down. Great, all right. And then let's say I want this to end uh, at 100%, 100. So full scale. And in Adobe, you can just click neutral or reset parameter and it'll Putting that, bring it back to its original position. And now we have this motion where we start zoomed in and it zooms out into the full frame. So this is just to help add some more movement to your time lapse. This is not a necessary step, but I kind of like it. Let's watch it through one time. And there you go. Of course, you can play with this some more if you want. You can even increase the speed here, like 200%. Um, do whatever feels natural to you. This is just some few options you have in post-production if you're feeling a little extra creative on your time lapse. Okay, so there you have it. I hope that was easy to follow and simple to understand. And if it was, please feel free to leave your thoughts down below. So with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.